Welcome to Fanboy Court. On this episode, Josh Gruber, the plaintiff and self-titled real Star Wars fan, is suing on the grounds that The Last Jedi is the worst piece of cinema since Jar Jar stepped in Bantha Poodoo, and that Disney has officially ruined his childhood. He is demanding that the sequel trilogy be struck from the canon and a new trilogy be made under his guidance because he, quote, has some really sick ideas. The defendant, Chris Johnston, is a fan who thinks that The Last Jedi was a cinematic masterpiece that takes the franchise in bold new directions. He is countersuing because the plaintiff is, quote, not a real Star Wars fan and demands that the plaintiff be stripped of his nerd cred as well as his complete set of Jabba's Palace Kenner action figures. All rise. Fanboy court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Melvin is presiding. Thank you, Bailiff. And may I remind the court that today we'll be getting into spoiler territories. So if you haven't had a chance to see these films yet, you may want to excuse yourself now. So, what do we got today? Okay, wow. The Last Jedi. You guys sure you want to touch this? Your Honor, the destruction of Alderaan pales in comparison to the cinematic atrocities Disney has committed with The Last Jedi. It was a poorly plotted mess that not only creates universe-shattering plot holes, but also mishandles characters from both the original trilogy and the new. Your honor, the plaintiff is clearly just butt hurt that Disney didn't make a Star Wars film that catered to his fanboy fantasies and made something that challenged the status quo. It isn't Disney's fault that the plaintiff can't handle change or perfection. Perfection? It was a travesty. The only travesty is what you've done to the toilets at Comic-Con. Okay, that was just one. Pep, 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 I do not want to have to use this, okay? This replica is camera ready and cost me a pretty penny. Sorry, your honor. These are some pretty big allegations, and <laughs> some extremely colorful language. You have any evidence to support your claims? Of course, Your Honor. <clears throat> a long time ago, in a movie theater far, far away, I saw a little film called Star Wars, and it changed my life. Luke, Leia, Han... Let's, uh, jump this argument to light speed, shall we? Yes, sorry. The Last Jedi completely mishandled all those beloved characters. Oh, gee, I wonder where this is gonna go. Did the new Star Wars movie ruin the image of your precious Luke Skywalker? I mean, yes, incredibly. But I don't even need to start there to prove my point. Allow me to present Exhibit A, Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron? You mean hero of the resistance, ace fighter pilot, and pretty easy on the eyes. The uh, <coughs> court definitely agrees with that last point there. He is all those things in the last movie. The Poe in this movie is an arrogant asshole whose disregard for authority is only eclipsed by his disregard for the lives of his fellow Resistance members. Well, yeah. I mean, but that's only so that he can learn a lesson and become a better leader for it. I mean, it's called a character arc. Look it up. You can't just jettison one piece of character development for another. It's, it's inconsistent. It's realistic. I mean, he's arrogant from his win in The Force Awakens and thinks that he knows better than his superiors. That beautiful cocky bastard had to be knocked down a peg. And to quote Master Yoda, the greatest teacher failure is. Ah, yes, failure is so great. Just look at Luke. He failed so much, he gave up on the force and became a whiny little bitch. When has Luke not been whiny? Your Honor, Exhibit B. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. This R2 unit has a bad motivator, look. It just isn't fair. Wait a minute, where'd she go? Bring her back, play back the entire message. But it's a whole nother year. But they're gonna kill her. No! Do you also have a montage queued up for all the time Snoke is a fleshed out character? Trick question, that's impossible. We know nothing about Snoke. We have no idea how he came to power. And before any of these questions can be answered, he's cut in half like Darth Maul. Your honor, Snoke's exit is like Finn's American accent. Absolute perfection. Here we go. What? Was Snoke gonna reveal at the end in this big monologue that he's, I'm assuming you thought, Darth Plagueis? Yes, exactly! If Snoke revealed that, it would mean absolutely nothing to these characters. I mean, even Luke and Leia would have zero context for who Darth Plagueis even is. And if I may invoke the original trilogy, we got zero backstory on the Emperor, and yet everyone still thinks he's cooler than A Winter's Night on Hoth. Yeah, because he was the OG. It doesn't matter where he came from. But when you introduce a pimp robe CGI knockoff after six movies of continuity, you better at least tell us where he came from and why we should care. Uh, we care because he can bounce force lightning off the ground and that is totally rad. Order, order. Well, we can all agree that bouncing lightning off the floor is rad. Let's move on. Fine. Let's move on to Canto Bite. <laughs> order, order I say. 
Canto Bite is a pointless distraction that slows the film down to a crawl. The opening titles move faster than these scenes. Jabba the Hutt moves faster than those scenes. Hell, R2-D2 rolling after Padme as they infiltrate Naboo moves faster than those scenes. I agree. The Canto Bite scenes may seem a little pointless to a Philistine because they portray something that we have never seen in a Star Wars film before, and that's a morally gray area. We've never seen anyone profit off of both sides of the Star Wars, and it's positively spellbinding to even consider. I mean, given our current socio-political climate. Oh, come on. First of all, they don't make that point until after they leave Canto Bight. And second of all, it takes forever just to get there. I understand wanting to show a new side to the galaxy, but this could have been done so much better and without such pointless bullshit. I mean, what did it all lead to? Such memorable lines as... I wish. I could put my fist through this whole lousy, beautiful town. Yep, those are the shuttle parkers. It was worth it, though. To tear up that town, make them hurt. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Objection! Oh, sorry about that. Don't know how that got in there. I guess all the bad lines just sort of blur together. Right, and I'm sure that the plaintiff here has a problem with the two coolest character arcs in the movie, Kylo Ren and Rey. Oh yeah, it was so cool that Rey turned out to be a nobody. Not. It's way better than Rey being Luke's long lost daughter or Obi-Wan's great granddaughter or whatever bullshit you posted on Reddit. Mon Mothless cousin. Why does everyone have to be related? What is this, Appalachia? What's wrong with wanting a huge reveal moment like an empire? It is so much more interesting that Rey is the daughter of complete nobodies. I mean, especially because her storyline is intertwined with Kylo Ren's, whose parents are complete legends. And I'd even go so far as to say that Kylo Ren is the coolest thing in this new trilogy. Kylo Ren is what Anakin Skywalker should have been. Vader was tortured by the dark side, but Kylo Ren is tortured by the light side. And Rey thinks that she can save him, which expertly echoes the original themes of Luke trying to save Vader. And even I thought that it was gonna work out. I thought that they were gonna team up and take down Snoke together in episode nine, but Kylo Ren becomes Snoke. That's awesome. Objection, your honor, he's talking about episode nine. We can't discuss our opinions on a movie that hasn't come out yet. Is the plaintiff gonna delete his tweets about how bad Solo looks? Withdrawn. Noted. Anything else to add before I reach my verdict? Just one more thing, Your Honor. One logic-twisting, universe-shattering thing. The Holdo Maneuver. Please direct your attention to exhibit whatever we're on. Oh, come on! How can you possibly hate this too? This is like the coolest scene in the entire movie. I will admit that it's the coolest looking scene in the movie, but let's think about it for a second. We see one ship light speed into another ship and take out an entire fleet of Star Destroyers. That's an insane amount of destructive capability for one ship to have. And in a franchise where entire movies are based on planet-sized superweapons and the uniquely drastic danger they pose, giving such destructive power to a single ship not only undercuts the legitimacy of those past films, but also drastically changes the way space battles should have logically played out for the past thousands of years. Here's how every space battle should go in Star Wars now. Oh, General, there's a Death Star orbiting our planet. Do you have any spare ships lying around? We do? Cool. Grab that ship, aim it at the Death Star, jump to light speed, drinks are on me. Objection! Your Honor, the plaintiff is attempting to apply science and logic to a series about laser swords and space wizards. No, I'm trying to hold it accountable to its own internal logic. The logic that the movies have spent the last 40 years building. It's totally okay to have fantastical elements as long as there's some measure of consistency. It's why you don't see machine guns in Game of Thrones or spaceships in Harry Potter. Without internal logic, you can't have any emotional stakes. And without those, you're basically just watching images flash on a screen. Well, uh, uh, you see, it was a last ditch effort and it's such a risky maneuver that no one ever attempted it before. Or um, uh, maybe, maybe the ship had a bunch of weapons on it that exploded. You know, or um, uh, the, the force, the force. It happened because of the force. The fact that you can only give me one sentence excuses tells me that even you don't believe the Holder Maneuver makes sense. That's not true. That's impossible. The Last Jedi is perfection. Star Wars is perfection. Star Wars hasn't been good since 1983. And even that was like a B minus. Why, you stuck up half witted You don't deserve to use that reference. Order. Order! Christ! I'm ready to read my verdict. Pause for dramatic effect, pause for dramatic effect. I'm throwing the case out. Clearly, both of you are not Star Wars fans. What? what? Plaintiff 
You're not a fan, you're a hater. You're weighing the choices the film made against your own headcanon, and there's no way it could possibly meet those expectations. You are living too much in your own nostalgia. To quote Kylo Ren, let the past die. Nailed it, Your Honor. And you, you're not a Star Wars fan either. You're a sycophant, a cult member. You clearly aren't thinking for yourself and are choosing to willfully ignore its many flaws just because it's Star Wars. It's okay to admit when something isn't great. Leia flying through space was shot perfectly and wasn't weird at all. A true fan can appreciate and celebrate the good while still acknowledging the bad. In short, y'all need to be more like Star Trek fans. Uh, I also have opinions about the new Star Trek films. Uh, but, 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 but. The point is, no film is perfect. Even the original trilogy had flaws. And if the new films didn't affect you the same way the originals did, that has to be okay. Because maybe they did for somebody else, someone new. And having more Star Wars fans isn't a bad thing. But right now, you are both poisoning the franchise and the fan base, and I hereby ban you from seeing any of the upcoming movies or in canon spinoffs. But I already bought tickets to Solo, man! The Melvin has spoken. Case dismissed. Uh, excuse me. Uh, how do you feel about the verdict? I mean, no more Star Wars movies. That's pretty rough. Uh, you, you know, you know what? I, I don't even care because Star Wars has Star Wars has always been stupid. Uh, it, it's just a stupid series, and even New Hope was bad, like... It, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, it looks like the defendant is coming out now. Let's see how he feels about losing his favorite franchise. Uh I need a franchise. No, I, I need sorry, a franchise. I need a franchise, please. I love any franchise so good. I need a franchise to become obsessed with! Fantastic Beasts was an awesome follow-up to Harry Potter. I love Johnny Depp so much! I'm giving Johnny Depp a chance! Please, I need a franchise! I need a franchise! Game of Thrones Season 7, the timeline makes so much sense! I love it! Please! I'll suck your dick for a franchise! I just need a franchise, please! Please, I need a franchise, please! Give me a franchise! Give me anything! Give me a franchise! I need something to love! Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on all the latest Warp Zone content. And if you want us another funny sketch, click the box on the left. Or to see another dope video, click the box on the right. Anywho, we gotta get out of here, so we're gonna hold on maneuver our way out of... God, I can't. I'm sorry. This, this movie bummed me out. Alright, bye.